Good afternoon, um, Facebook, YouTube world. This is Prophet Walker coming to you with another installment to my channel. And I pray that this is a blessing to you. I will be doing something like a series, it'll be like a podcast feel. Um, a bunch of men, a bunch of saints, uh, just getting together talking about issues uh, concerning the church, concerning the world, but coming with a biblical perspective. And this will be the uh, kind of like the first one. We've done others, but this will be the first one in the series. Uh, today we're get, uh, here with um, a group of uh, men of God. Some of them are late coming in, but that's all right. You know, we have a lot of people come late to church, ain't nothing wrong with it. But today we have Minister Robert Bonds. He's here. He's a good friend of mine. He's, a, he's an awesome man of God. So he will be um, joining us today. I would start us off with prayer and a scripture. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for all things. And we thank you that you give us instructions and wisdom about life. Father, bless this podcast so we can say some things that will be edifying for your people. Uh, enlightening for, for ourselves in Jesus' mighty name. And, um, I, you know, we can talk about a lot of issues. I didn't really um, go into deep in trying to find a topic. Um, I thought I could just free flow. But um, one thing, the scripture that came to mind um, was um, Romans 12 and 2. And it said, and it reads, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And what happens is the world teaches us how to live life. Although God, who created us, formed us uh, with his hands, had gave gifts and talents of purpose for our life, and he gives us instructions on how to live life, the world, I mean, those, uh, the, uh, the system created by Satan who leads his children, you know, you're, you're a child of the devil if you're not a child of God, and he teaches you how to live in, in this world. Um, and some of them are written down in books, but it's, it's transferred. It's, it's knowledge that's transferred from generation to generation, from person to person. And uh, are you in agreement with that, Minister? One thousand percent. Yeah. So we talk about some of the things that we've been taught as men, uh, according to this world. Um, Definitely. Uh, that's that's against God's principle. Most things, according to the world, that the world teaches you, is it, going to be ungodly, against God's principles. It's going to hurt you, displease God, and if the curses, gonna bad results are going to come afterwards. So m name one something that the world taught you. Or you were taught by the world that just it was against God's principles wasn't right. Yeah, I love what you said about the world's teaching is not written down in a book. It is displayed on a TV. It is in your news feed. It is in your social media feed. It is in your TikTok video. I haven't seen so many teenagers want to dance in my life until TikTok came about. And they're all dancing the same dance. Yeah. I learned from a minister that uh, certain words are not just words, they're actually demonic spirits. So if you listen to hip hop for a while, you'll find that certain words keep coming up, like the F word and the S word. They're both four letter words. These words are not just words, these are actually spirits. So most, you know, if you listen to just hip, keep going, listen to them, they'll keep saying this F word and this F word and, and this S word. These words, these music uh, videos and songs are designed to just pull you away using these particular spirits. Mm -hmm. yeah, and man. so, like you said, it's not written down. It's just influence. Mm -hmm. Influence. So, yeah, one thing that the world teaches me is that in order to be a man, I must be an alpha male. Certain traits from the alpha male are stark contrast to biblical males. Mm -hmm. uh, what God would want us to be, right? So alpha male, um, they dominate to the point where others are fearful of them. Oh. Yeah. Biblical manhood, not really. God wants you to be dominating, but to the point where others are excited that you came around, mm -hmm. right? You dominate, not dominate with fear like the world, mm -hmm. but dominate with love. Mm -hmm. So these, both, these men both dominate. But what spirit do they use yeah. to dominate? Amen. Um, uh, 
even in relationships in the world the dominant male uses women but the, in the bible the godly man partners with their women you know adam and eve the two become one they partner so well that they become one yeah. <laughs> you see her you see him you see him you see her yes not so in the earthly realm yeah if you see him she around there somewhere mm -hmm. right but she ain't close <laughs> she close she in some missus days she can't say anything you know it's just stark differences on what a worldly man is versus what a godly man is and so uh i think this is a great first session on this series of uh of our manhood and things what men go through. So yeah, man. glad to be here. Actually, uh, uh, you, you're giving a great example as far as um, like a, a dominating, a strong man that people want to follow versus someone who wants to make you follow them or make you respect them out of fear. David. David was a strong brother. You know what I'm saying? He was very courageous. He was actually, he wasn't even a soldier. Uh, but when, uh, when Goliath, and the Philistines came against the children of God, it, it made him angry. He had a righteous indignation and he wanted to fight David, uh, the Goliath, defeat Goliath, when all the trained soldiers, his brothers, and everyone else were afraid. You know what I'm saying? But it says, the Bible says that the people loved David. The men loved David. They wanted to uh, follow him. They they saw goodness in him. Yeah. But the world teaches you uh, about, man, you, you better get respect. You man, you gonna respect me? That type of right. thing. Like, and and even that, no, they don't respect you. Because respect is honor you. You know what I'm saying? Value you. Uh, people don't just because they're afraid of you doesn't mean they respect you. Correct. And so, Correct. Wow. and so both men get angry. Yes. But why are they getting angry? Yes. Both yeah. men are violent, but why are they getting violent? Yeah. Is yeah. it for their own personal goal? because there's a big God in heaven who's requiring it right now. Yeah. You know? So uh, there is also a thin line. <laughs> there is a thin line. Because like you said, we're supposed to be certain things require a male to use their dominance. But why are you using it? Right? Is it for the ambitions of God or for selfish ambitions of the world? You know, that the world teaches us. So, um, Yeah. Another one, sex. You know, God. There's nothing wrong with sex. God created it, but He says, even I was just whoa, saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. you went over that too fast. You said okay. God created sex. Yeah, God yeah. did. Who did? God. Okay. Okay. Yeah, actually, okay. Like, no, no. Actually, I use that when I minister because um, the enemy think it's something he he's he, in in the eyes of most sinners is twisted and perverted. When mm -hmm. I was growing up, even as a kid, I heard it as the do, the it, the nasty. These are things that me and my brothers amongst each other were saying. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was uh, it was serious. And ooh, you trying to, you know, like this. And um, but I never heard. I don't know when I, I you know, we, I did hear that you're supposed to wait until you're married. But uh, God created sex for marriage. Right. And you're supposed to wait till God blesses you with a good wife. Oh, then, why, Charles? Huh? Why? But there's a purpose. That's God, uh, God, God knows that, that there's a reason there's a purpose for it. Yeah. Uh, but the world don't teach you that. The world teaches you in order to be a man, in order to get that respect. You're not a man if you ain't having no sex. You're not a man if you ain't running through the women. You know, um, even a, if people told me, Charles, they go get you some, they'll get them pimples off your head, you know, mm. your face. Something wrong with you if you ain't having sex. But that's an oxymoron. You know what I'm saying? The same mm -hmm. people who believe that uh, you need to be having sex still think that well, a man is the head. And uh, but the idea that the man is the head came from God. Mm -hmm. How can you be the head? How can you lead if you can't lead in sexual purity? We believe women mm -hmm. are supposed to be pure. Women are supposed to be pure, and men want to be pure, women, but they don't want to be pure. They're not. They they oh they're taught, taught that you have to be experienced in those areas. And there's mm -hmm. a scripture uh, that says that. Do not awaken love before it's time. There is a time for sex. Even Adam. Adam, when God created Adam, he formed him from the dust of the earth. 
he uh, shared the beautiful earth with him and Adam named all the animals that God created. He spent time with the father. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Then it came a time that God says, hmm, it's not good that uh, man to be alone. Then he, he, he created Eve. You know what I'm saying? I believe that was strategic. He wanted Adam to get to know him as father. Spend that time with um, him. Then bless him with the uh, wife. And not just with Adam. Think about the, uh, the patriarchs of the faith, the different ones. They would be at uh, with the home with their family. And their mother and their father would say, mm, it's time for Joseph to have a wife. It's time for Isaac to have a wife. It's time mm -hmm. for Samson to have a wife. And they would go choose a wife at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, so their identity as a male was not born because they were sexually active. Um, it's a blessing from God to partake in sex when you're married. But that doesn't make you a man. Just because you can have sex does not make you a man. Yes. Especially the number of women you go through. Does not make you more of a man, but that's that's not what the world teaches. Man, that's great. <laughs> you shocked me. You said God made it. I was like, huh, what? You know, I don't see that in any movies or videos. Yeah, you know, the world don't teach you that. TikTok, you know, I don't see yeah. that. You know, but that's true. God did make it. He made it to be good and pleasurable, and men are supposed to do it. Yes, but why? To bind yourself with the wife you and him chose together, right? The world teaches you, just have sex with whoever yeah. you want. They don't tell you the repercussions of that though. The repercussions of getting with the wrong person, having sex with the wrong person, having a baby with the wrong person, right? right? Sleeping with the wrong person, they have a disease from, from them sleeping with the wrong person, right? Now you are in stress for the next 18 years. Now you're paying child support through this bondage. You can't even travel because you're on this, uh, you can't even get a passport because of so many things that are tied up in the legal system. Simply because you had sex before your time. I don't see that, Charles, in my TikTok feed. I don't see that in the romance movies. Did you know that, Charles? Yeah, yeah. But it's, it, when you see some of the consequences, um, even that, when my pastor said, you don't love that person. You're in lust with this person. You've gotten, you, you don't have control over your body and you've gotten in lust with this person and build a sexual relationship with uh, this, this person, but don't, you don't know nothing about them. I, I like, like what you're saying because when you say lust, it can still be vague to the person. Like, what do you mean by uh, lust? Because oh, of, uh, I only want to have sex with them. I don't care about how they feel on a Tuesday when it rains and their puppy, you know, died or something. Yeah, you're right. I don't it, care it's about, it's, can I get oh, any drugs? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and it's not just men, men and women. Uh, yeah, you got, exactly. you got into a relationship with this person solely off of sexual desire. Right. Once sexual desire is fulfilled, uh, you're stuck with the person um, because sex is addictive. Uh, uh, they start moving in with each other. They do different things out of order. Then you see, uh, they're stuck. Uh, you find out this person is disrespectful, mean. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't care nothing about you. They don't treat you right. Um, I didn't have to treat you right to have sex with you. I didn't have to have sex with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, to but they don't know that having sex with them binds them to the person. Yeah. But then a lot a lot of people, it does bind. And a lot of people feel like if I just have sex with you, then everything will be right. No. <laughs> no. It didn't take, it didn't take uh, sacrifice and feelings and emotions to, to have intercourse. You know what I'm saying? You want this person to love you and treat you right and honor you. But you didn't honor yourself when you chose this person. You told oh, Charles, yeah. Charles, Charles, a straight food. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But hey, you like that? Mm. Yeah, you know, he tall. Wow, he crazy. You know, that, that's good. It's telling you who he is. Yeah, he crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he crazy. But, you know, so we have to make good choices and be led by God. And some of the results, actually, I was watching um, paternity, this paternity, uh, paternity show, talk show with Lauren, whatever. And I watched it and I bust out laughing. Because you know it's one of those, and you are not the father shows. Yeah, yeah. And then God says, "Son, that's not funny." And I was like, "Oh yes, yes." <laughs> and God was like, "Son, that's not that's funny. funny." And so then I began to see God's heart. Like God is good yes. that you have had sex with so many men, you don't even know the father that child is. Yeah. Or the man, you had sex with that woman, now you deny that that's not your child, and you know. That's your child, or you know that you know what I'm saying you had sex with her. Talking about there's no way that that could be my child, or it's so many different scenarios. That's 
that grieves the father who created with a perfect example of family. And then they have to put those children through that. Because some of those children, the men, have taken on the role of father. I watched one the other day, and I, I'll be honest, I almost cried. Uh, he he it got down to it. Then he pulled out the paternity test, and it said that you are not the father. And the guy cried. And then it said, well, he said, well, I will. If she's not my, my child, I need to know if my junior, not just me, but my junior is my child. And it says, no, you are not. Your, your, your son, your junior is not the father. So that just grieved me that he had to go through that. Uh, that we have people who are very deceptive, women are deceptive, they don't even care. As long as someone is taking care of the child, supporting them, they create this fantasy in their head and they'll deceive themselves, deceive the other person. But uh, that's on both sides. Huh? Yeah, it happens that's on both sides. It happens on both sides because he could have, you know, I mean, sometimes it's cheating, it's a different way, but if we do it God's way, it'll eliminate so many of these problems that we have. So many of that. Uh, the it problems. helps to know that he made it. Oh, he made sex, so maybe I should try his way. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like you say, sex is, is, is binding. It's I know some of the people that it's just like a, it's like they're they're addicts. And it takes until they receive the indwelling of God's spirit, they renew it in their mind about how I'm supposed to pursue that. That it's a wow. holy sacred thing. And you don't just go out every Friday night just to get you some on the weekends to get you yeah. some. But it's it's more than that. And um And if you live that way, maybe there is some counseling that's in your future that needs to happen. Yeah, it is because yeah. that, that stronghold has to be broken. That chain yeah. has, has to be broken. But not just that. About um, the world is talks about uh, teaches you to be be selfish about uh, chasing money. You know, it's all about you. But that's not the Bible. Yeah. Humility, yeah. servitude. Jesus came to serve. He's the He's the Son of God. He came to serve all yeah. mankind. You know, um, actually, one particular thing that I, I dealt with. Um, was that I I was taught and the Bible says the glory of a man, of a young man of a man is his strength. I've always been heard that a man is strong, you know, phys phys physically, you know that that's what a man is. A man has muscles. A man is strong, you know. A man can do some physical things, and 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 of course, men are strong, and even um, biologically, we're made strong. But that's just in the flesh. Uh, I actually I met a widow woman at our church. Small, she's very small, uh, short lady. Uh, she was she was an usher at the uh, church, uh, and she had cancer. Uh, actually, the church was built for her because she followed the, the uh, pastor everywhere he went, uh, everywhere the church went. So God told the pastor to go to church because she so she shouldn't have to travel. She got cancer, got sick, and continued to faithfully serve God throughout cancer. Actually, when I met her, she uh, she looked nice, had on a usher uniform, but had on a wig. I, you know how black women is. I ain't know. I thought it was a wig. I said, your hair looks nice. And she gave me this little smile and said, thank you. But at that time, she had cancer. She wore the wig because her hair fell out. Yeah. And the pastor, she was saying, the pastor was telling her, you don't have to serve. You don't have to do no excuses. But she said, no, I'm going to serve the Lord. Yeah. For all God has done for me. See, that is strength. But that's yeah. the inner strength. The strength on the inner man. The, the yeah. strength down in your spirit, man, that when you go through the trials of life, you know what I'm saying? To the world, this life will uh can knock you down. Uh -huh. uh, it's some things that your muscles can't do. You know what I'm saying? Your no, muscles exactly. can't fight cancer. Your muscles can't fight the different temptations or uh, situations that come at life. But the strength that God gives you on your inner man, on the inside, see, that's where you need to be strong. Yes. On the inside. You need to be strong in the power of God's might. Yes. Through his strength. We can do all things. Yes. So I, I learned that from seeing her. Um, that And then she would continually faithfully serve God, faithfully tell her testimony, how God healed her of cancer. He healed her of cancer. Amen. Faithfully serve um, the Lord. And uh, she was a pinnacle at our church. And, and I, you know, I use that, that example. It's not all about physical might. Because there, there are men out there who are uh, world professional bodybuilders. Mr. Olympia. But can you serve God? Can you deny your flesh? You know what I'm saying? Uh, when temptations come, can you resist temptation? Yes. Do you love God? Do you put God first? Because yes. you being 
um, in great shape, having a six pack abs, you having muscles like that, that's good physically. But what about your spiritual, spiritual man? Yes. So we have to have a balance. Yeah, you take care of yourself. There's nothing wrong with exercise. There's nothing wrong with uh, muscles, but uh, we also have to be strong on the inside. Yes, I like what you're saying because God is not upset with you having muscles because he made them. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something. God keeps making stuff. He made them so that so not so that you don't walk in the worldly way to feel strong, to prove to others that I'm a male. Yeah. He made you a male. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> you're a male with a small or big. Either one, you're still a male. Yeah. But with those muscles, can you bless others? Can you help a single mother move into a home because she was at uh, the homeless shelter and now her and her kids can have a place to stay? Did you move the couch? Okay, that sounds like you're using your muscles for the glory of, of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. You're using those muscles to beat women or to protect women? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Okay, to beat your wife or to protect your wife? Yeah. Muscles are just muscles. How are you using them? Mm -hmm. right. For yourself. Yeah. For the creator. You walk you walking around with a sheer shirt on so everybody can see your muscles. Please, bro. Come sit down. Some that's just pride and arrogance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. God says he, he can't stand that. You know what I'm saying? Even that you yeah. said no, that, that is prideful, yes. Yeah. Because you just wore a regular shirt, but since you're prideful, now you want to show them off. And yeah. you wear a particular shirt to show that. Right. That is fear of the pride. That's not from heaven, yeah. right? That's from hell. Yeah. And so, yeah, that is a worldly thing. So, yes, I agree with you on that. Something else you said, that God made us male. You know what I'm saying? So, Wait, yeah. hold on. You're going too fast. <laughs> God chooses who's going to be male and who's going to be female. Hold on, come on. Oh, stop. When we're, me and you are spirits, Charles. Yeah. Me and you are a spirit before we get into the body. Yes. And God decided, not me and you, that I'm going to put Robert and Charles in a male body instead of a female body. Come on now. His prerogative, not mine, not yours, right? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So, okay, now from that foundation, go go to what you're about to so say. That, that, you, you, you can use, use a lot of that. Okay, so uh -huh. your identity as, as a male comes from God. And Correct. as a man, as a woman comes from God, we're created in the image and likeness and of nobody else nobody else opinion about yeah. whether i'm a male or a female mm -hmm. doesn't matter because they don't have that power to decide yes and that's where i wanted to go next when go in the time people have what they call gender dysphoria with, mm -hmm. with a mental illness which is a demonic spirit telling you that uh that you can change your sex or gender and you cannot it's not acceptable to god that's just very disrespectful but it's it's a it's a tactic of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy mankind by getting you not to accept how God created you and to, to, to marry and procreate and continue to bless the generations uh, with what God has given you. you. We all know that. Um, well, uh, we are the, who, are, who are the saints know that if God created you a male, well, you're a man. It created in His image and His likeness. 